Está aquí está bien. Touch gloves. God bless. We're going to destroy our it's speech about other. War. It's about to be a war. Listo! Ready? Navarrete in the red trunks, trimmed in black. Joette Gonzalez in the white trunks, trimmed in blue. Looking sharp tonight. Navarrete awkward, powerful, and aggressive. But he hasn't been able to land anything solid yet, and here comes Joette with the first counter. Joette has a tight defense. He uses that often. Navarrete is going to look to split that guard. Early on, he might not get to that part where he wants to get to, but later in this fight, trust me, he will land his signature left uppercut. Typically, Navarrete is a slow starter. He's starting a little bit faster in this first round. Based on what I've seen from Joette, we know he can hang with Navarrete in first gear. But when Navarrete takes it up to second and third and fourth gear, I want to see if Joette can keep up. See the awkwardness of Emmanuel Navarrete early on here against Joette Gonzalez. And the one thing that Navarrete is going to be, have to be conscious of is the fact that He's used to being able to take a step right back because guys haven't been as long as he has. He only has a two-inch reach advantage tonight. <laughs> and he can't afford to make the same mistakes as he get caught there by a nice right hand from Joe Gonzalez, who lands a left as well. See, that's going to be Joette's advantage right there. Anytime Navarrete gets himself out of position, Joette is going to be close enough to make him pay with offense, whereas most guys couldn't. So far, Joette has taken the early onslaught of Neverete well. You normally start to see fighters get wide-eyed as if they're shocked that he's landing those kind of punches. He hasn't been able to land those kind of shots on Joette, and Joette has answered just about everything Neverete has thrown. Finally, some nice body work from Navarrete. And here, Joette comes with the answer with the left hook. How do you get an offensive fighter off for you? You get their respect, and that's what Joe Ed's trying to do early on here in this championship fight. Stop, 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 stop. That tight guard of Joe Ed is giving Navarrete a little bit of trouble early on. Right to the body, and Joe Ed comes back with shots of his own. There's Joette with the quick combinations. We said he could be aggressive when he wants to. And he's there toe-to-toe -to -toe with Navarrete fighting his fight. La campana the bell, gentlemen. Navarrete putting a good punctuation point to the end of round number one as we'll listen into the corners. Let's go. Okay, How you feel? Yeah. You okay? Listen, baby. If he is in there, watch out. He's just setting you up. Setting you up. Don't let him set you up. Okay? Watch out for the hook when he goes. That rope. Eyes red. You gotta be careful. He's lunging forward. So watch his head. Take a step back. And always work. You gotta faint. And you gotta stop him with the jab. Or with the left. Round two of a scheduled 12-round championship fight. Second title defense of Emmanuel Navarrete's featherweight title against Joette Gonzalez, who is trying to win the belt that he could not take away from Shakur Stevenson in what was a dominant victory for Shakur. And here, Joette Gonzalez holding onto the left hand of Navarrete. And Navarrete then goes to work with the right. I love how Joette is not showing Navarrete any any respect and anytime Navarrete doesn't punch Joette Gonzalez comes with his offense 
Now, but Ete beats Joet Gonzalez tonight, fellas. He's going to earn it because Joet came with a made-up mind. There's zero hesitation in his approach. He's not enamored with Neverete. In fact, he's fighting like he doesn't like him, which is the right mentality when you're facing a guy like Neverete. I don't mean they have personal beef. I'm talking about in the ring. There's a disdain in the body language and in the punches of Joet Gonzalez right now. Joet feels that many people wrote him off after the way he lost to Shakur Stevenson. And so there's only one way to get that back, and that's to earn it inside the ring. And he's doing that with body shots against Emmanuel Navarrete. There's a nice jab from Joet. And immediately tying up Navarrete, showing Navarrete that he's not going to bully him like he's done every smaller fighter he's faced. And that stings when you lose a championship. And then you have to fight a guy, a top contender, to, to get another shot. He had to wait, and I'm talking Joe Gonzalez, a long time to get this shot. You don't want to lose again, and you see that urgency in Joet Gonzalez right now. They're swelling under the right eye of Joet Gonzalez, a small laceration as well. But you see that's not stopping him. Nice jab there from the champ Navarrete. Changing the rhythm right there. Doubling and tripling the shots up on the jab instead of throwing a single jab. He tried this first uppercut from no man's land, Navarrete. I asked Jose Gonzalez what was the plan. He said, Body, 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 Joet's doing fine. You know, Arreta now starting to lunge. If it was another fighter, you'd say, what's going on? But it's just part of who he is. But you gotta be cautious, even though when he does lunge, because he'll come out of nowhere with the shot. Arreta somewhat complaining about those punches to the back, but... Joet right now not being bullied at all, not showing Navarrete any respect as they both exchange in the blue corner. Beautiful stiff jab right here for Joet. Just taking advantage of the hand placement of Navarrete. His hands are always down. Just a beautiful stick right down the middle from Joet. Nice flurry from Joet Gonzalez, who gets clipped by a nice left hook there from Navarrete. Now the right uppercut and the left hook to the body. This is the offensive firepower that we've come to expect from Navarrete, who's finding his groove. And see, that type of offensive firepower, see, that makes you want to fight. That's what Navarrete wants. He wants Joet to open up so that way he can land something clean on him. Nice right hand there from Joet Gonzalez. That right eye doesn't look good from Joet. The right eye is damaged. Yeah, it's starting to bleed at this point now. And we got a cut for a punch. Cut the, for a punch. The referee, Ray Corona, now calling it a cut from a punch. And that could change the entire fight now, Dre, because that means if the fight gets stopped, it could be a TKO. Well, it's in a good spot if you're going to have a cut. It's under the eye, so. You gotta let the cut man do his job. Hopefully he can stop it or at least slow down the swelling, but it's not slowing down Joe Gonzalez right now. He's still pressing just like he was in the first two rounds. Maybe a little hesitant with the cut, but Navarrete's also picking up the pace. Navarrete digging to the body and Joe now just covering up. How do you react to having that blood flowing from your face? He was cut against Ricardo Proano. Right eye in May of 2016, David Clark on the head, and then Daniel Tokbaev as well. So there's a fourth fight that Joe had seen blood flowing down his face. And here he comes with a nice right combination. And he's got Navarrete against the ropes, and he's got no answer going backwards. Joe better be careful. Those shots are going to come from no man's land. <laughs> Trust me. Now, the big mistake Joet's making is he's not coming behind a jab. He's just walking to Neverete. So all Neverete has to do is let his shots go. And even if he doesn't land clean, he's keeping Joet with his hands up and he's unable to punch. He's got to come behind the jab. He'll hit Neverete flush because Neverete doesn't have good defense. Nice combination there from Joet as 
Navarrete leans down. Joet is right on top of him. Stop, stop, stop. This is turning into a fight. I'm telling you. Now the question is, does this type of fight favor Navarrete or Joet Gonzalez, whose right side of his face is a bloody pulp? I'm going to tell you, Navarrete, he loves these type of fights. My goodness, look at the way the swelling has happened. And that, I mean, I'm not a doctor, but it's bad. Because of the swelling. Let's see if this left hand is what caused the cut on the cheekbone of Joet Gonzalez. He closes his eye and it was a cupping shot. Hey, bueno pelea, bueno pelea. Beautiful left hook, lead left hook right there from Navarrete. Right when that cut opened up, yep. Great work by our production team. Excellent moment where they catch exactly how it happened. And now, Dre, we gotta see how they react. But first, let's take it to our own Mark Kriegel, who is with cut man, Mark Basil. Mike, what do you see in that cut and how do you fix it? The cut is a big cut, but it's under the eye. It's the swelling I need to address. The swelling is the most important thing. We don't want the eye to close. Thank you, Mike. Body work there from Emmanuel Navarrete. His punches just sound different. Stop, They're thudding. Stop, like, boom. Sounds hollow. It's weird. You know, Navarrete has some heavy, heavy hands. And Andre, you talked about him being a slow starter. He's finding a rhythm here. Yeah, and I don't even think he's in his top gear yet. I think he's working his way there. Uh, he's getting in a good groove. And I do think the cut is starting to bother Joette. And I say that because he's not throwing punches like he was. And he simply just doesn't want to open up because he doesn't want to get hit on that eye. There's that one, two, plus the left uppercut from Navarrete. But here comes Joette. He's not going to take a step back either. Cabeza, watch out, you guys, right here. See that short left hook from Navarrete, but Gonzalez comes back with a quick right. My oh, body shot right there from Joet. Joet is in this fight with the body work and the right hands, but then he gets that left hook dug right into his rib cage from Emmanuel Navarrete. And Joet getting smacked right now. <laughs> by Navarrete. I don't care what y'all say. Yeah, he getting smacked. Them shots that Navarrete, those combinations that he's landing on the arms, on the side of the head, everything. It's hurting him. Navarrete with a little dip and slip. Mm. Yeah, good body, body work shot. right there. That was good body work right there. That is the key right there. We saw Diaz. Diaz had a lot of success when he bagged up Navarrete and hit him to the body. But the thing is, can you take Navarrete's punches? Can you take his shots back? Oh, he's hurt. Navarrete got he's hurt. hurt right here. And he's here hurt. comes Joet Gonzalez trying to put it on Emmanuel Navarrete, the champion. <laughs> they said they were going to try to destroy one another. And that's what we're seeing through four rounds here in San Diego, California. Joet Gonzalez, despite the blood, despite the swelling, he's finding a home for his right hand on Emmanuel Navarrete. Great fourth round, great exchange and great punch right here. Joet's just been chopping down, trying to trot down this tree. They both threw right hands, but Joet Gonzalez's right hand landed right on the chin, and it's because he came behind the jab briefly blinded Neverete and was able to land a flush right hand on the chin that Neverete definitely felt. Let's go, second down, my piece I don't know if there's a second cut now on the eyebrow of Joette Gonzalez. We keep an eye on that as well, but Mike Basil has his work cut out for him, as does Emmanuel Navarrete, because Joette Gonzalez is feeling the urgency here. He's complaining of a headache. Headbutt. It's something Joette told us yesterday that Navarrete is susceptible to straight shots. And that's exactly the shots that have been doing damage here early on in this fight. Nice. Gonzalez had his first title shot two years ago. It took him another year to be able to fight Miguel Mar Mariaga to get to this point. He doesn't want to lose again because he doesn't know if or when he'll ever get another shot. And I recall Emmanuel Navarrete telling us 
expect a bloody battle. This will be the type of battle that we can do two or three times that can put us in Mexican boxing lore if we both go out there and do our job. <laughs> Gotta respect that. He knew what he was getting into, Dre, and this is exactly what he wanted. Yes, he did. Oh, nice jab once again from Joette Gonzalez. That high guard defense is giving Navarrete problems. He can't seem to find a way to land a clean shot against Gonzalez. Talk about the awkwardness. We talk about the unorthodox angles. Well, the long arms of Joe Gonzalez allow him to protect his body and his head at the same time. And that's why Navarrete's body work isn't as effective as he's used to. Because joe has got great defense. And not just that, but Gonzalez is forcing Navarrete to go into his bag of tricks to see if he has any other tricks. Or is he, is he going to keep throwing the same combinations, the same type of punches? So he's forcing Navarrete to think and dig deep a little bit. See a lot of those shots going on the punt, on the gloves or on the forearms of Joe Gonzalez. That'll also do some damage over the progress of the fight. That's how you want to answer a champion, a guy who's established and feels like this is just another defense. He hits you with his signature shot and you hit him back with a left hook. That lets him know I'm here. And now it's Navarrete digging that left downstairs. There's that uppercut. And when, when a fighter like Navarrete starts complaining to the referee, he's looking for help. That's a good sign if you're in the corner of Joe at Gonzalez. Good sign. Let you know that Navarrete is not comfortable and he's definitely bothered at the moment. And now he's southpaw. Manuel Navarrete is digging into his bag of tricks. Not because he wants to, but because Joe Gonzalez is forcing him to. And it's still only the fifth round. Mm. There's that right hand from Navarrete. Oh my God, look at the nose of Joe Gonzalez. Uh, really bothered both guys here. Both guys just exchanging inside the pocket. Of course, the heads are right down the middle. Collided together. You can see Navarrete got the worst end of that. Yeah. Complaining to the referee about his lip. Dr. Digging, baby, digging. Telling Corona that the referee Ray Corona, there's two cuts now. Stay on, baby. Don't get caught. his house. Remember, not bad. Though. Make those hands. Make, make. Throw and put your hands back on the guard, okay? Mike Basil earning his money over there in yeah. that blue corner as a cut man. They call him the mechanic because he could do it all. And there is Lilo, Joe Gonzalez's is French bulldog. As Joe Gonzalez is also part of that team. His brother. Not sure why Basil didn't have the inswell on the eye of Joe Gonzalez if he's trying to keep the swelling done. You got to use every second in that 60 seconds or 55 seconds that you get in between rounds to try to keep that swelling down. We're talking about 600 punches thrown through five rounds completed between these two fighters. This is a war. They both promised that. And Andre, this is what your scorecard looks like. Yeah, it, almost every round has been a close round, almost a swing round. But never that day, just his sheer volume, he'll steal the play in certain rounds from Joette Gonzalez, even though Joette may land the more telling shots at times. There's Navarrete getting awkward and going with those uppercuts. And there is the sheer volume of Emmanuel Navarrete. He throws 70 plus punches per round. 43 of those tend to be power punches. And that's exactly the rhythm he's getting into as he now turns southpaw. The champ trying to throw Gonzalez off here in round number six. The only way you stop Navarrete is you got to knock him out. That's the only way, because he will continue, continue to apply pressure and throw those combinations. I don't know if that's the only way, Tim. Man, I'm, he going to keep coming. I'm telling you, he going to keep coming. Now you see Navarrete sticking the jab out there, setting up that overhand right. But 
Gonzalez he still has an answer for him, and there's that long right hand. He said the straight shots are going to be my key to victory. Yeah, the straight shots beat a, 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 a hook nine times out of ten. Just depends on where you throw it from. The fastest way from point A to point B is a straight, straight line. line. And Navarrete, I don't know if he knows how to throw a straight shot. Oh, he does. He just rarely does it. Hey, there it is. But what I like from Joette, tight defense, tight guard, and then when Navarrete wants to rest, then that's when he works. There he goes. A nice right hand to the body that of hurt. Navarrete. That hurt Navarrete. That was a beautifully placed right hand to the body from Navarrete, but then, I mean from Joette, but then here comes Navarrete with that crazy uppercut, and there's a nice short right from Joette Gonzalez. Another close round, another good round, but it's around the Navarrete so far as winning because of sheer volume and he's landing more punches, but Joette has definitely had some good moments in these rounds. And these rounds really are hard to judge. But then the, the way that Joette looks with this, the problem is the swelling. And even though the end swell was on that cheekbone of Joette Gonzalez, it doesn't look good. And if it, the eye starts to close, I can't imagine having to face Navarrete with just one eye. He threw 90 punches in that last round, landing 27 at a 30% clip. That's almost double what Joette was able to land. There goes that uppercut. And once Navarrete starts to throw that as a lead punch and connect, that's bad news for Joette Gonzalez. Look at that. Combinations. Some of that stuff is getting through, some of it's not. But it's how it looks to, in the judge's eyes. It's going to be hard to walk to a guy. Oh, and he tripped like him, but then day. he also landed Can't a shot, hit. and he's hurt. Nice quick counter from Joette Gonzalez. It only makes Never That Take fight harder. <laughs> That's right. The only way to stop Navarrete is you gotta knock him out, Dre. <laughs> <laughs> the only way to knock him out is to go right after him. That's what Joe Ed Gonzalez is doing here in round seven of this championship fight. A long history of Mexican and Mexican-American fighters facing off in Southern California. And this fight is worthy of that tradition. Joette has shown that he can stun and get Neverete's attention, so it's not out of the question for him to land a big shot and put Neverete down. Moments before that combination happened, I'm not sure it landed, referee Ray Corona just said, your feet got tangled, watch your feet. So we'll take a look at that in between rounds to see just how effective Joette was. But nonetheless, he's hanging with the champion, Emmanuel Navarrete, who lands a five-piece right there on Joette. Joette's got a have a jab and I don't think he's gonna start using it tonight but if he had a jab he would do himself a lot of good tonight and the fighter walk to a fighter like Neverete with that kind of length that kind of reach throwing mm. those kind of punches nice uppercut from Navarrete who's finding a home for it now and at one point I asked Joed in the fighter meetings can you punch with him can you match his punch output and he said if I have to Tim I think he's going to have to he's gonna have to yeah, because, I mean, he's, he's blocking a lot of the shots. Some of the shots are getting in from Navarrete, but he's not punching back. There he is. Mm. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's all I could say. Exactly. Those shots are heavy coming from Navarrete. On the tangling of the feet. Navarrete in the corner right there, steps Thank out. You. Comes with the combination, brought that back foot forward. Just knocked off balance. That was uh, Navarrete's right foot getting tangled with the foot of Joette Gonzalez yeah, that caused that hurt. wobble. Hey. No, he wasn't Thank hurt. You. It's not the job, it's not the job, it's not the job. It's not the job. Go after him. Come on. I'm not standing there. Go get him in the corner. And move laterally and then pop. 
Te quiero alegre como esta, güey. Come on, I want you, I want you out there with energy. Round eight of a scheduled 12 round championship fight. Manuel Navarrete, the champion of the WBO at 126 pounds. This is his second title defense. But Joel Gonzalez, and again, it's a trip between these two fighters that sends Emanuel Navarrete sprawling off towards the canvas. And we take the total punches, 125 to 86 landed so far, favoring the champion, Emanuel Navarrete. Let's take a look at the trip. Ooh. Looked like Gonzalez stepped on his foot purposely. <laughs> and why wouldn't I you? I think that was intentional. <laughs> Trying to use everything he possibly can to beat the champion, Navarrete. Stop, stop, take a step back. Navarrete going from those awkward angles right now. He's just touching right now, Gonzalez. He's trying to get him to open up, and then he's going to unleash a hellacious combination. Ray Corona letting him fight on the inside. I really like that. As he should. Yeah, because there's referees who just don't let it happen. And these two guys are warriors. That was a low blow. That's a low blow. That's the third one I've saw. Come on, you gotta keep I've seen up. so far. You pulled his head down. Come on. Let's go. Let's keep him up. Don't kill his hand now. Let's go. go. No time to recover for Emmanuel Navarrete, which tends to be the norm. There they feet get tangled and Navarrete lands on right. So we've seen that happen throughout the fight now. Both of them trying to gain ground and establish their lead foot. Mm, nice right hand there from Emmanuel Navarrete. He raked him with a left foot for good measure. Eight rounds in, and it's win by any means necessary for Joet Gonzalez. He's got the urgency of feeling that inflammation in his right eye. But Mike Basil has done an exceptional job over in his corner as a cut man. Yeah, but he's neglecting the body. Joet Gonzalez needs to go down to that body. He's coming forward. He's having some success over the top end occasionally, but the body is where he needs to hit. Mm, there's Navarrete with the left hook downstairs. Nice. This will take the air out of anybody's tires. It's a good round for oh. Gonzalez. There's Navarrete <laughs> saying, you like what you see from him. What about what I'm doing? Tired from round three, and I don't see that happening. I love it. <laughs> I, I honestly love this. Love what I heard in that corner. Over there in Joel Gonzalez. Motivation. They know that this is the moment. Just Ooh, to Joel. Nice right hand over the top of the jab. The lazy jab of Navarrete by Joel Gonzalez. Then he makes him pay for it, Tim. Every time. It's beautiful. Legs get tangled once again. The counter left hook from Navarrete, and here comes Joel with another low blow. Stop, stop, stop. Stop, stop. Right, listen, listen, listen. Let's go. You know, it's Mike Basil who has Joet's eye, but who's got his ear is his brother Joe's. Says, push him back, push him back. He has no experience going backward. Completely right. And Navarrete came in up. Minus 650 betting favorite, plus 425 for Joet Gonzalez. So this is a much more even fight than the odds makers had it. Joet said styles make fights, and his style, it's made for a great fight, and I'm going to bring everything. And so far, we're seeing that from both fighters. Navarrete. I don't think Navarrete gets credit for his craft, you guys. Yeah. I know he throws the wide punches and he does things that, you know, are not technically sound, but he's got craft inside. You see him, you know, leaning on the arm of a fighter so they can't hit him in the inside. He moves them on the inside, where you know, the way he wants to. He's a, he's a master at breaking through the guard. 
Doesn't matter if you have your guard up, he'll find a way through the guard and land the shots that he wants to land. He, he throws upstairs down. He's got a lot more craft, even though it looks crude, than people give him credit for. Whoa. Nice. Digging right to the body from Navarrete. Oh. Nice right hand now from Joette Gonzalez. Digs to the body with the left. But here comes Navarrete with an answer of his own. Navarrete steals the play every time. That's how a champion answers when he gets hit with a good shot. You got to take the play back from the challenger. It's another low blow from Joette. That's five. Ooh, nice uppercut from Emmanuel Navarrete. Joe Gonzalez takes it well. Let's go is what he's telling Emmanuel Navarrete. Now Joet going on the offensive here to close out round number nine. On the right cheekbone of Joet Gonzalez, it was a looping shot from Emmanuel Navarrete, and immediately you saw the cut open up and the blood start to flow, and it hasn't stopped since round number three. And he's in this fight. Credit to Mike Basil, the cut man. Come on, come on the job. Come on, not the job, baby. Come on. It's not the punches now. Let's go, second hey. Come on, come on. You see how tenacious Joe Ed is and how hard he tries to impose his will. One of the things you're seeing tonight is just how great Shakur Stevenson really is. Just take a little bit, it's gonna get in your eyes. And now there's a second cut, or a third cut, over the left eye. No, but there's a there's also a cut on the left eye of Joette Gonzalez, but it's the too much grease on the cut on the well. There's two cuts on both sides of the face. I mean, Joette Gonzalez has just landed another low blow. Ray Corona lets it go, and Joette takes advantage of Navarrete looking over at the referee. Now Ray Corona's not gonna get involved in that. Come on, oh. another low blow, man. That's six tonight. I'm telling you. Get up, get up, levant that thing. Hey, big old key. Let me see your hands. Get up. Get up, bro. Who's been fighting? He said, get up, or I'm going to take a punch from you. He's been hitting them low all night long. If I'm Navarrete, I'm going low, too. Then he'll get a point taken. Well, that's true. <laughs> Ray Corona, California judge. Joey Gonzalez, California fighter. I'm not saying anything, but I'm saying it. <laughs> Cause that's a lot of low blows on the belt line. We'll take a look at it on the replay to say to see if it was on the low on the belt line or if it was really low. And there it is. Right, Navarrete does justice by his own hand. You're that's not gonna take care of me. Keep it up. <laughs> You're not gonna take Just care of me. I'll up. take care of it myself, Dre. You've done that <laughs> once or twice. I'm gonna do what I gotta do. <laughs> There's Navarrete now digging to the body. No, punch is straight low sometimes, but if a person is intentionally trying to hit you low and the referee's not doing anything about it, you, you got to do what you got to do. Not in the back. There's a shot to the back now from Joe Ed as well. Stop, stop. Take a step back, Rose. I just didn't like the way he handled it, saying if you don't get up from a low blow, I'm going to take a point away from you. Yeah, I don't know what that was about because he warned Joe Ed before he did that, so I don't know why he's threatening Navarrete. He should have gave him up to five minutes if that's what he needed. Nice combination there from Emmanuel Navarrete. These two are fighters. If you don't look at Joe Ed's face and respect what he's doing in the ring, you're watching the wrong sport. He's taking a lot of punishment, guys. And Navarrete's a hard puncher. Joe Ed's taking the shots, credit to him, but he's taking a good amount of punishment tonight, and the fight's not even over. Flush shots, straight shots, uppers. Left hook. Here, Joe lands a nice left hook there on Navarrete. And here comes an onslaught. Put your arm up, put your arm up. Here comes Navarrete loading up with those shots. Can Joe Gonzalez catch him in between shots? The fighter who closes oh. these, these next 15 seconds wins this round. 
They both know what's at stake. They both want the title. But it's just the sheer volume, the sheer will of Emmanuel Navarrete, who's an offensive juggernaut, an offensive machine, who's thrown 783 punches, landing 216 of them blows. The replay will confirm or deny. That's on the belt line. That's, That's low. That's low. That's a low shot. Two more rounds, Joel. Two more rounds. Oh, that's low. He's been doing that all night. I'm telling you. There's another one right on the cup. He's been doing that all night. I don't understand why the ref turned around and said what he's hit now. But that thing, if he called it. that a low blow. <laughs> well, that's the word. It, it happened right in front of him. He looks at, at Joe Ed says that's twice. And then looks at Navarrete and says, get up. And if not, I'm going to take a point from you. Like, it makes no sense. The championship rounds. Emmanuel Navarrete looking to defend his featherweight world title for the second time against two-time world challenger Joe Gonzalez. Last round, 35 of 97 for Navarrete, 20 of 71 for Joe Gonzalez. 71 punches thrown. That's the average for Navarrete historically coming in. Gonzalez is matching that output, but Navarrete is boosting his game. Wow. No matter what the outcome in this fight, Joe Gonzalez has boosted his respect level from the boxing community. We saw him against Shakur Stevenson get out class. We saw him come back against who? That's trip. another trip, Andre. On his foot. Against Miguel Mariaga, which I think is an underrated performance because Mariaga is no joke. But tonight we're seeing something that we haven't seen before, a toughness, uh, a durability, uh, a grit against a, against a really, really good champion. My goodness, look at just the sheer volume of Navarrete. And here comes Joet Gonzalez saying, you got a five piece, I got the same thing from KFC. <laughs> Good right hand right there from Navarrete. When Navarrete gets out at distance and he uses his jab, the fight's easy. He's able to keep Joet Gonzalez out at bay. Many times he sits there just a little bit too long, you see Joet come on. With all due respect, nothing's been easy tonight, man. Both of these guys are earning it. Navarrete gets clipped there with a nice right hand from Joet Gonzalez. The heart, the determination of Joet. Look at his face. He looks like Whoa. Jorge Travieso Arce nice in there. And Move here the comes right the hand. left hook and the right hand from Joet. And the answer from who else? From the champion, Emmanuel Navarrete, who's leaning in. He's there for the uppercut. Yes, he is. And that's a shot that Joe Gonzalez should look for, the uppercut. It's a shot that Navarrete will not be able to see. Gonzalez still present, trying to get that big shot through on Navarrete. Navarrete is punching everywhere on the body of Joe Gonzalez in the meantime. Another one that strays down by the belt line from Joette Gonzalez. For everything that Navarrete does wrong, being a warrior, being an aggressor, is absolutely everything he does right. All right, let's take a look at the trip that looked like a knockdown here in round number 11. Again, veteran move right there from Gonzalez, purposely stepping on the foot of Navarrete. That's not a mistake. He's intentionally stepping on his foot. He's trying to take advantage of any opportunity he can to win this fight tonight. Don't 
Ruben Olivares, Ruben Castillo, Bazooka Limón against Bobby Chicón, Carlos Zarata against Alberto Dávila, Julio Cesar Chávez, Oscar de la Hoya, Barrera, Tapia, Jory Boy Campas against Fernando Vargas, Mexicans against Mexican Americans deliver wars in Southern California, and this is no exception. Navarrete Gonzalez will go down on that list after tonight. Joel Gonzalez says, I don't know how many chances I'm going to get at a title, so I have to make the best of it. And he's doing himself proud tonight against just an offensive machine in Navarrete. I'm just impressed with Joel Gonzalez and how he's been able to take these shots from Navarrete. Where other guys can't take these type of punches, he's taking them well. Very well. well you see the body work from Navarrete. Nice right hand there from Joet. And he clips him to the body as he's walking out. Joet with a nice two left hooks there. Man, look at the face of Gonzalez. Oh my goodness, look like he got plastic surgery on his face. <laughs> Goodness. You don't even look like Joet. His dog Lilo is ringside. Will she recognize him after this fight? As now, Emmanuel Navarrete, after taking a nice one two from Joet, lands a four piece. Oh. Goodness. This is a war of attrition. They promised to destroy one another. And here they are with a minute left in this final 12th round of a championship fight, trying to do exactly what they promised. Oh, big right hand from Navarrete. Joe Gonzalez can take a shot and then come back with some. Navarrete set that up. He threw a jab, took a half step back, threw another jab, and a big right hand that landed flush. And just to say this one time, this was a mandatory fight. But great fights happen when promoters come across the table from the other side of the street and do things like Golden Boy and Top Rank did for this particular night. Fifteen seconds left in this championship fight. The crowd will just show you just how good this fight was. Are you not entertained? That is the only question I have for boxing fans watching tonight because Joette Gonzalez fought through what is probably a broken orbit yep. orbital bone since round number two. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds here inside Pachanga Arena, San Diego, we go to the judges' scorecards for the official decision. Pat Russell scores the bout 118-110. Max DeLuca and Patricia Morse Jarman score the bout 116-112 for your winner by unanimous decision. And still, WBO featherweight champion of the world, Emmanuel Vaca.